Good morning, Santa Clarita, and welcome to Via in Action. I am your host, Jason Gibbs, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS. Joining me on stage today is the Walter Cronkite of Santa Clarita, the James Brown of local charity entertainment, and the only man with more positive comments in his tool belt than an inspirational poster manufacturer, Mr. Ed Masterson. Ed! Jason, wow, <laughs> this is the best crazy <laughs> intro of all of them. Thank you. That's many, very kind. Although, Walter Cronkite, I, man, that's that's a big thing to live up to. Well, I was going to say, how many of our listeners even know? Shane, do you know who Walter Cronkite is? Uh, will it make you happy if I say I know the name? Yeah, sure. that's good. Sure. All right, that's I know the name. That's all I know. Ed, who's Walter Cronkite? Well, Walter Cronkite <laughs> is probably the finest <laughs> broadcast journalist of all time. But, but Shane's not a broadcast journalist guy, so he's he's more of an entertainment broadcast guy. Right. Thanks, Ed, for looking out for me. Sure. I'll make sure to study that one as soon as I go home. Oh, yeah. No, he's really good. <laughs> Jason, good to see you, sir. Thank Thanks, you. Ed. And by the way, I like that shirt. Thank you. It's a Warner Brothers red. That's what they call it. That's Warner. a real thing? Yeah, it's a real thing. Is that Warner Brothers logo on there, too? It's on there. Very subtle. Just a tone-on-tone -tone thing, so you're not screaming, look at me, I bought a logoed shirt. Well, that's why we're on the radio. No one yeah, has to worry about that. I know. VN in Action is a show dedicated to informing our community about the Valley Industry Association, or better known as VIA, the events and programs that we produce and having guests on the show who have both shaped and benefited from the various activities that we put on. We have a wonderful history here in the Valley since 1981, and our dedicated members have formed long-lasting business and personal relationships that continue to benefit our wonderful town. We invite you to check us out at www.via.org and come learn more about our programs, committees, and ways to step up your business. This week on VIA in Action, Ed and I will be talking with some of our dedicated VIA members who have both supported the organization and gotten engaged with its members to bring positive and long-lasting business advice, connections, and professional credibility. For 39 years, VIA has represented and advocated for businesses in the SCV, and it's members like these joining us today who have been instrumental in our success. Despite my weekly jokes and colorful intros, there's more to the organization than the prize-pending skills of your dear radio hosts. The networking opportunities, relevant business information, and our professional and welcoming atmosphere that is found at the in-person and even on our digital events are all made possible by those willing to step up and strive for a better tomorrow. Joining us this morning is the Area Marketing and Community Outreach Manager at UCLA Health, Ms. Claudia Dunn-Martinez. Before joining UCLA Health, Claudia had the pleasure to work as the Chief of Staff for Chancellor Van Hook at COC. And before that, with the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Corporation, the SCV EDC, where she implemented and managed their startup administration services and special events initiatives. She has also provided countless hours volunteering and serving her community. Most notably, she was the co-founder of Football Club Valencia. You know she's a good person if being a UCLA Bruin alum and Ed the USC man won't hold it against her. Claudia, thanks for joining us this morning. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hey, How Claudia. Good, good to have you on with us. And, Thanks. And I, I will to start by saying I do know who Walter Cronkite is. Good. Me. There I'm you go. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Well, Thank well, you. Shane and I are going to need a, a lesson on Walter here pretty soon. Uh, okay. It's great. It's I great. hate to date myself, but yes, I do know. <laughs> no, it's great to have you with us this morning. It's fantastic. And I, was, uh, I know uh, Jason will be bringing up some of these things too, but one of the, the greatest things I loved about uh, your background as well is that I love how you term sort of some of the jobs you've done here in the Santa Clarita Valley as your retirement jobs in quotation marks after having put in 28 years with the city of Los Angeles. Now, I've known you at least 15 years, and I've there's no way I would have ever imagined you had an almost 30-year career with the city of L.A., and now <laughs> you're still doing all of this, and you look like you're about 30 years old. So something there's something there to hard work, keeping people looking young. It's, it's always great to see you around. You do so much. Oh, thanks, Ed. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I attribute that to my... Uh, my Italian background. Uh, <laughs> my my grandmother passed away when she was 98, and she looked like she was about 60. So okay. I think I have good blood or good genes or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> A lot of energy. That's great. And this is the valley to have it in, for sure. Yeah. The Santa, Santa Clarita Valley is amazing that way. Wonderful. Well, Claudia, again, thank you for joining us. Would you mind uh, just kind of going over a little bit about UCLA Health and your, your time here in the valley and what you guys are all about? Sure. Um, as uh, you, you all mentioned, I... Uh, I uh, just previous to this job with UCLA Health, I've been in it about 18 months now and um, was previously with uh, College of the Canyons for the last five years or so working with Dr. Van Hook and boy, that's an amazing experience and 
really gets you to understand and know this valley quite well, which is really important in the job that I have. Um, we've been a proud member of VIA for about the last, well, since 2015, last five years or so. And um, UCLA Health uh, is, is here in this community, but UCLA Health itself is uh, one of the largest and most comprehensive technologically advanced healthcare systems in the world and is comprised of uh, four different hospitals, Ronald Reagan Hospital in Westwood, uh, Mattel Children's Hospital in Westwood, the uh, Resnick Neuropsychiatric Hospital, and the, our medical center in Santa Monica. But more than that, UCLA Health is, uh, is part of the community. It's, it's got over 180 clinics and practices throughout Southern California. And then when you drill down to Santa Clarita, there we have uh, some community practices here in Santa Clarita. Uh, and it's uh, real important from, from the leadership and from the, the, the community, from the, 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 uh, the system itself, that uh, many of our doctors live and work here in the community and, and want to be connected with the community. And that's, that's so important to, uh, especially in this time of COVID, people feeling like they have a connection and somewhere they can go and pick up the phone and, and connect with their, their medical uh, practitioners and care. How did, uh, Claudia, how did you come to be, how did they recruit you over to UCLA Health? I mean, I know you're well known in the community, you're out and about all the time, people see you and all the, the great background that we've talked about in terms of what you've already done here in town. How, how, was, how were you uh, sort of in, uh, asked to come on over and join the UCLA Health team? It, it's very, it's interesting. It's, uh, it, it was through someone who was working with me at the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Corporation who uh, had heard that they were expanding the Boots on the Ground outreach team. And um, the, the team that I'm part of is out of Westwood Marketing, but there's about four of us that do Boots on the Ground throughout Southern California, and we have regions. And um, so this person that I knew through... Uh, the SCVE DC had said, hey, I heard about this job. And, and I was already had hit five years of call to the canyons. And I thought, you know, maybe I need something that's, uh, you know, I, I mean, a little different. I work out of the house. I'm a little more out and about um, and, and all of that. And uh, it just it, it excited me because I'm also a Bruin and I graduated from there. And I felt like, well, maybe this will be my last retirement job, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the one. <laughs> the one, you know, coming full circle, you know, um, coming back and working for UCLA. And uh, one thing led to another, and this is where I am, and I, I really, really love it. I really love it. Now, now Claudia, is it true that uh, UCLA has a better football team than USC? I will take the, plead the fifth on that. <laughs> I was gonna, I'm just trying to get God, fired up God, this morning, that's all. God, God knows what's going on with COVID anyway, so <laughs> right now. But, yeah, historically, uh, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, the competition of the, you know, the, of the century, obviously. And, and I had season tickets for so many years, and I love it. Awesome. I love it. Great. It's great. <laughs> well, Clyde, can you tell me a little bit about the, the nonprofit that you were one of the co-founders of, the, the Football Club Valencia? I thought that was very cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we've lived here, we moved out here about 10, 15 years ago, I guess. And, um, I had been very involved and my husband and very involved in, um, soccer anyway, because, um, my, my daughter in particular had played at various levels and at college and things like that. And, and we had sort of been involved in the, in other nonprofits, uh, that, that, uh, support youth soccer and kids that wouldn't off, wouldn't normally be exposed to it over over time, um, based on where they live and, and whatnot. And I had lived over in the San Fernando Valley and in Glendale prior to that. So when we just we moved here, we just thought, you know, our kids were, were out of the house and all that. And we thought, you know, we seen the good, the bad, and the ugly with youth sports mm -hmm. <laughs> and youth oh, soccer yeah. in particular. And we thought, let's let's do something on our own. So in conjunction with a, another friend uh, who is, is on the athletic program over at College of Canyons and my husband who's on that staff as well as uh, a couple other people, we started, we decided to do, found it ourselves. And we, we've been in place about five years. We okay. have about, um, we have nine or ten teams out here in Santa Clarita, but then a friend of ours who has teams in San Gabriel is also a part of it. So there's a branch of us over there. And uh, we've got kids from ages uh, about 
six or seven all the way up to high school. And uh, it's, it's just really rewarding and uh, I, for, for everything that you can imagine, it is a nonprofit. And so we, we, do, uh, we do, do, do it for the love of the sport, you know, and to, to develop them correctly and the right, the right ways. And, and we've got a lot of great kids with a lot of great families. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, that's fantastic. The youth sports thing, as you said, there's good and bad sometimes, depending on uh, the collection mm -hmm. of people involved. But yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> we know that you guys are doing it right just because of, you know, who you are as a person in the community. And I love that, you know, the fabric mm -hmm. of Santa Clarita that I always talk about, how it, how it really does work. I, you know, you're here, you're doing one thing and people see you in action and then they just sort of say, what about something over here, Claudia, because we love your skills. So that's, uh, that's yeah. really fantastic. So, I mean, it, lo I love the fact that you're able to just be, <laughs> you know, need any of these jobs and they just kind of keep coming to you because people like you so much in the position <laughs> yeah it, i mean you know we, we i feel like you know one day we all have to answer to something else and and we i i always feel like we'd love to be able to to say that we made a difference in a small way big or small you know you know yeah. you don't have to be a politician or anything else you can just do something in your community and and uh and be part of it and be positive about it and yeah. help folks yeah. No, that's wonderful, go. Clyde. Now, when I was looking at your biography, one of the things that caught my eye toward the end is uh, you mentioned being a chancellor's marshal at commencement. Now, my commencement ceremony, maybe it was just a different experience because I think Cal Poly was just excited to finally get me off the campus. What is a chancellor's <laughs> marshal? Well, it's funny. I'm not even completely sure they have them anymore. Of course, you know, I went to UCLA as an undergrad back when we didn't have to have a 4.8 GPA to get in. Yeah. I mean, in this day and age, I'd no way ever get in, right? But, um, you know, I was a decent student and all that. And then, and, and what what it is, is it's, and I think they still do have it, is um, it's an honor you get if you've been very involved in community service programs at the at the campus during, during your undergraduate um, tenure. So uh, at the time, uh, I actually, <laughs> I actually was part of a, a community service program at UCLA. I was a sociology major, and we used to go to probation camps and tutor um, uh, incarcerated teens and, and kids that were were there. And it was a program we started, and we, we would have uh, UCLA students go and help do that. And so, because we, we got that going, and it was a really great you know boots on the ground, figuring out what to do and how to help and, and give back to helping kids that had taken a a weird path. Um, we we did that, and so because of that, they picked people at commencement who would get this this honor, um, and it was called the Chancellor's Marshal, meaning that you were you were involved in community service programs and and sort of gave back to the community, that kind of thing. I think they probably still have it. I don't know, but um, but you know, it's what you, you in terms of being honored. As as you know, Ed, at USC, when you've got graduations, there's thousands of people there. So it's mm. not like you get called up. Right. Like the whole group stands up and they sit down. And they wear an extra rope on their, their, their rope, you know. It's, it's, it's that kind of thing. But it, to me, it was a very big honor. And it probably charted the path to where I ended up. So. Well, well I, no, I mean, just hearing that story, and I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Look at your entire life mm -hmm. of service and mm -hmm. volunteering and all the things you involve yourself in are so meaningful and impactful on people's lives and uh, again I, I'm just shocked you can have 47 jobs already at this point in your life you're, you're so young looking I can't believe you've had all these different and jobs. And you feel like an underachiever too Ed? I, yeah big time. I feel kind of ashamed I feel like she should be talking to us and telling us to step it up a little bit. Yeah big time. <laughs> No way. You guys are so busy all the time. I see you everywhere. You're, you're just too busy. <laughs> well, we just we just don't get invited anywhere, so if we don't volunteer, we're not allowed to, yeah. to go to all these fun events. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> kind of true, actually. Got it. <laughs> kind of, it is kind of true. All right. <laughs> now, now, Claudia, how did you get involved uh, with the Valley Industry Association? I know UCLA Health has been with us for, I think, about five years now, but it, did you have involvement with VIA even before being with UCLA? Um. Actually, yeah, when I was working with the SCVEDC, that was right when it started. It was, it's not what it is today. It was back when um, it was barely, barely started. And I had just um, taken this early retirement from L.A. City, and uh, someone I think you all know and love, Rosalind Wayman, who was a, oh, yeah. a friend of mine from working in the city of L.A., and uh, she, had, she knew I had moved here and said, hey, there's this startup uh, thing happening here. Would you be interested? And... 
And uh, I, I met, went in and met with them, with Bill Kennedy and Jonas mm. Peterson and, and them. And there was only Jonas working at the time and said, hey, um, you know, do you want to work with us and help us get this going? I said, sure. So I took the job and that's where I met. It was the best job I could have because I hadn't been in Santa Clarita Valley very long. And when um, I took the job, that's where I met Kathy. Mm -hmm. And I met um, people from the chamber and the college and, and all of you. And um, it just was the best the best thing in the world. And um, Kathy in particular, I think we connected from the beginning. Um, and uh, so I always kind of, I always knew Kathy. And then when it kind of, you know, then I worked with COC and everything. And periodically we'd run into each other and see each other. So when I took the UCLA health job and... Uh, uh, I took it from Nikki Bonner, my predecessor. Mm -hmm. She she says, oh, I, I need to introduce you to Kathy Norris. She, she's the, the best. And you need to know about VIA. And I said, uh, I know all about VIA. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and I was, I was, I was like, yeah, I, it's amazing. I'm so glad that we're part of it. And I'm so glad that we've been a, a, con, a contributor and a, and a member for so many, for since 2015. And, um, and it's amazing. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, VIA is such a benefit to this community. They, they, uh, they're. It's a community where growth is happening constantly, even in the state of COVID. Um, it, the growth and the, the the meaningfulness of living in this community is, is exhibited by VIA and what they do for everyone. And I, I can't imagine anything that we wouldn't want to do with VIA and for VIA. That's awesome, Claudia. And I do remember back to the early days because you were kind enough to hire us at SOS Entertainment to do the uh, yeah. the AV stuff. And I think the first year or two was an early morning event. I seem to recall the event starting early in the morning versus in the afternoon like it is now. But that was really kind of you yeah. to bring us in on that. Yeah, yeah. That cool. <laughs> yeah that's where I first met you, yeah, yeah. for sure, with that SOS, yeah. yeah. I remember. Wait, how early morning are we talking here? Ed? Well, I I, it, it, I think it started around 7.30 or 8 o'clock at the latest yeah. back in those days. It was an early morning event. Something then, like that. Yeah. 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 It's funny. Man. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Well, Claudia, I mean, th thank you for joining us today. You know, Ed and I just like to get to get together every week and just kind of mm -hmm. shoot the ball, if you will. And since Salt Creek doesn't open till noon and we had the mornings off, we decided we'd just come into the radio station and, <laughs> and talk to good people. <laughs> oh, someone's here. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we really appreciate you, Claudia, and UCLA Health as well. Mm -hmm. And, like, you guys, again, you talk about, you know, being part of the fabric of the community and the boots on the ground and all those things. Mm -hmm. You guys really are uh, an embodiment of that. And so we're, we're very appreciative mm -hmm. of what you do and also what the organization does for sure. Well, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm we're so happy to be in this community. And um, if anyone, you know, needs any help from us or – uh, wants a, a, a doctor to speak at something. We're mm -hmm. doing a lot of pivoting with virtual events right now, and uh, we're, we're doing all kinds of things, such as uh, we, we actually, I'll, I'll do a plug for this, we're doing a, a virtual race uh, that is going to benefit cancer awareness, breast cancer awareness, and anybody living anywhere can be part of it. It's called Be Moved, and I'll, I'll pass that along to Kathy to maybe stick in the, That'd the be great. Uh, email blast. Yeah. But there's there's things like that that we do in the community uh, now, and, and things that were more focused to a community are now obviously virtual because of COVID. So right. um, anybody anywhere can participate and be part of it, and we're very excited about that. So um, we're, we're, again, so happy to be part of VIA, and I look forward to us having a much longer and fruitful, uh, more fruitful than it is, although I think it's amazing now, relationship with VIA and the board and everyone there. Well, thank you, Claudia. Yeah. You're, you're, you're the best. Thanks for coming on and talking with us. Today. No, Appreciate we do as well, Claudia. Thank no you problem. so much. So you're listening to VA in Action on your hometown station, 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS. Yeah, I don't know if I'd remember that every time, but there's a sign behind Shane's head that helps you remember with the, the FM station. Otherwise, I might be in trouble. Thank goodness. Jo <laughs> Join us after the break, and we're going to be chatting with Mr. Tamara Gurney, President and CEO from Mission Valley Bank who has been a tome of knowledge about PPP, a local leader in financially navigating the ever-changing COVID waters, and a terrific VIA contributor and member. We'll be back. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high-quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies, as well as board-certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. 
For more information, call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip-flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. When I invented my pillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. My pillow will get you into that deep sleep faster and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed. It's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com and use the promo code KHTS or call 800-973-3927 and use the promo code KHTS. That's 800-973-3927 or MyPillow.com and use the promo code KHTS. Yes. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank. And I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point Branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. The coronavirus has put us in a position of creating a new normal. Family Law at Home understands. Their goal is to meet you in the safest place possible. And these days, that might be in your own home in a virtual meeting. Family Law at Home will provide you with immediate advice on your family law matters, such as divorce cases, child custody disputes, and domestic violence. It's as easy as going to FamilyLawAtHome.com. You'll choose your own consultation date and be in immediate contact with one of their esteemed attorneys. Family Law at Home handles the legal aspect while you and your family navigate the new chapter in your lives. Go to FamilyLawAtHome.com. This is Jason Gibbs, the host of Via in Action. Join fellow VIA member Ed Masterson with us every Wednesday from 9 to 11 as we interview business, education, and community leaders to discuss the current economic climate and how the Valley Industry Association can help move your business forward. Meet and hear from elected officials, big and small business operators, and nonprofit organizations who are the economic engines in Santa Clarita and see how you can help your business and community thrive. 98.1 98.1 FM and AM 1220, the community's choice. Thank you, KHTS, for keeping me posted with the latest on COVID-19. Welcome back, Santa Clarita. You're listening to Via in Action. This is your host, Jason Gibbs, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS. Still with me today is the one, the only, the red, the guy that just reminded me that the habit came from my hometown of Santa Barbara, Mr. Ed Masterson. Thank you, Jason. You know, you sound a little bit like, you ever see the picture years ago with Robin Williams, Good Morning Vietnam? I did. Yeah, it's based on the real life adventures of a guy named Adrian Cronauer, but when you say Good Morning Santa, you you remind me of that character. Oh, I think. Is that a good thing? Yeah. No, it's a really good thing. I love that picture. It's a great show, and Robin Williams, God rest his soul, fantastic in it. It's a great movie. Via in Action is a show dedicated to informing our community about the Valley Industry Association, commonly known as VIA. The events and programs we produce and having guests on the show who have both shaped and benefited from the various activities that we put on. 
We have a wonderful history here in the Valley, and our dedicated members have formed long-lasting business and personal relationships that continue to benefit our wonderful town. We invite you to check us out at www.via, that's via.org, and come learn about our programs, committees, and ways that you can step up your business. Our next guest this morning is President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, Ms. Tamara Gurney. Ladies and gentlemen, this lady is the real deal. Voted the 2012 Leader of the Year by the Chamber, EDC, and the Valley Industry Association, Tamara took the vision for a new community bank and has led it into the successful business it is today. During the uncertainty from COVID-19, Ms. Gurney was there discussing and explaining the rapidly coming programs like the CARES Act Paychecks, Pro Paycheck Protection Program, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, and various SBA debt relief. With so much turmoil our business community has had to deal with, Tamara has been a steadfast advocate and facilitator of the information we all need to continue moving forward to a sense of normalcy again. A true success story, a philanthropist, and phenomenal organization partner, Miss Tamara Gurney. Tamara, welcome. Hi, right, Tamara. Good morning. Thank you very much for that very uh, kind introduction. <laughs> well, it's very well deserved. I mean, it's it's probably not even as much as we should. You you do so many wonderful things for the community and Mission Valley Bank as well. And and as Jason was was talking about those things specific to the COVID nineteen thing, I think that that really speaks to just what a great leader you are that in short amount of time when all of that was sort of flying fast and people were trying to figure out what was going on, how is it going to affect my business, my employees, my families, et cetera, you really were sort of the beacon uh, early on in this whole process of being able to, to, to have information that people could rely on and it was, it was right on the money and, and you just really kind of, I think were sort of the go to, became the go-to person for that information. How, if you don't mind me asking, how did you become so knowledgeable so quick about that to be able to be sort of the expert on that? Very early on in the process, I thought, which is you know one of the very impressive things about you and, and the bank as well, is just like being right in there in the middle of it right off the bat. How do how'd you get so well-versed on all that so quick? Well, first let me say that uh, I have an amazing team behind me that really made all of that happen, So, uh, it, and it takes kind of, uh, it takes a village, as they say, and I think I have one that uh, we're all sort of marching in the same direction with the same mission in mind, which is to serve our communities and help our uh, business clients be uh, successful. So it was, that whole process uh, came down, as you know, very, very quickly, and we were trying to stay abreast of the changing environment in the CARES Act uh, every single day. So we did put in the hours to pour through pages of documents highlighting things that we knew would be significant uh, pieces of information for our business clients and the community. And um, I, I don't know that there was any anyone, including the SBA and the Treasury, who were clearly experts yeah. because it was so evolving. I know mm -hmm. it came about on a Thursday night. It was being launched on Friday in April, April 3rd, I think it was, and, um, and it changed that very day. <laughs> so, you know, it, it uh, was a moving target, which created a lot of confusion for uh, clients. So we, we worked uh, seven days a week up into the evenings. Uh, we got organized very quickly and had a, kind of an assembly line, if you will, to, uh, to take applications, get them underwritten, get them up into the portal. Uh, I think one of the things that I think was the most important for mm -hmm. us that differentiated us from what I heard from even non-clients who, who came uh, frustrated with their existing bank who wasn't responding to them, uh, and it moved so quickly and the funds in the first round were evaporated so quickly that people were very anxious and concerned they wouldn't make it in, and they weren't being told where they were in the process. And one of the things we stressed at Mission Valley is we've got to reach out to clients. We've got to keep them aware, either phone calls, emails, text, whatever it took to let them know where they were in the process and to um, alleviate their concerns and their frustration. And I think I'm very proud of the team. I, I think they did an, an amazing job. And by the uh, feedback that we received from clients and non-clients who we helped, 
uh, it, it was really um, a big success for us, and I'm really proud of the team for what they did. Well, yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head <clears throat> is the um, connection and the contact. And, you know, and being a community bank, you, you, you really live up to that sort of uh, and embody that sort of connection to the community. Because, again, without mentioning the bank that, that SOS was doing their dealings with, I don't want to, you know, cast aspersions, but it was exactly what you said. There was no contact, no response, no, uh, I think some of the response we got back was no we're not going to participate or yes we are but we're not sure and it was and again I, I felt for them as well because it was coming so fast as you mentioned and it, it certainly didn't expect anybody to be a professional right off the bat and, and remember all the information but it, it really comes down to I think the comfort level you're talking about and how, why people appreciate you and your team and the bank so much is that that level of look we're here we're trying to figure it out we are figuring it out here's where we stand and that I think is what people really value as part of the process in a addition to the actual knowledge itself about how to proceed, how to get yourself in the program, et cetera. So, I mean, just no, every single person that has talked about it and talked about you and, and all the great work the bank has done is just really, I don't want to say mesmerized, but they're so grateful and so appreciative how you really stepped into the fray and became really like a calming influence in terms of providing information, Jason. I mean, isn't that kind of what, yeah. No, 100%. And for the last six months, I think the biggest thing that we're all facing, not not just with business, but at home and in life in general, is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And as Tamara mentioned, it was changing daily and changing so fast. And a lot of times, you know, my, my heart's breaking for people. There are people who just want to go, they, they want to be at work, they want to be able to provide for their families and their kids and live their life, and they, they don't know... They, it became so political, too. It became just a firestorm. You couldn't have a position one way or the other. Everything got so... Uh, it, it's so, I don't know, vile, for lack of a better word. I, but, yeah. but Tamara, I will say, when, when you, um, I believe you did a, a, a Chancellor's Circle event where you were speaking about uh, PPP and VIA was a part of that, um, what was so interesting to me is so many people logged on to watch that program. You know, normally you can, you can expect a certain number, you know, 50, 60 people to, that attend a normal event. I think we were well into the hundreds, yeah. if, if I recall correctly, because there were so many. And I remember, I remember watching on the Zoom meeting. You know, normally you sit there and, and people are kind of texting on their phones or they're they're spacing out a little bit mm -hmm. every time to time. Everybody was bent on every single word that you were saying and taking. I mean, you could see copious note writing going on, yeah. because everybody was was so interested in the information you were providing. I mean, you were truly you were a blessing to the business community in this town. Well, thank you very much. I mean, that's that's our mission uh, at the bank, uh, what we strive to be and why we exist. It's why I started the bank uh, almost 20 years ago is to, to be that trusted advisor, if you will, to local business owners. And um, this just gave us that great opportunity. Um, you know, one of the things I found interesting is, is with the advent of technology and, and where essentially I've seen since we opened the bank the, uh, the lobby traffic go completely away as people move to uh, delivery channels through technology, your phone, and uh, et cetera. And this was a time where it really showed that having a relationship with, in this case, with your banker uh, is really critical. And I've heard so many people say that, that they didn't realize that all of the, the uh, technology they were taking advantage of at our major bank, which is great and, it, and it's very efficient and convenient, but when they needed someone to talk to, they came to us. And so that just kind of warms my heart that there's a future for community banking and, and we have a place. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of folks move their business over to the bank because they really do value being able to talk to a human being, and especially in a time of need under so much stress. Um, it, it was really important. So. Well yeah, I mean, Tamara, that to me has always been one of the uh, – charm is the wrong word because that kind of feels like it minimizes some of the great uh, work that goes on in the business community. But to me, the thing I've always loved about Santa Clarita – is exactly what you're talking about. You can have a face-to-face, in-person relationship with the person that you're working with, and even though we all need technology and we all value it and it's great and it sometimes saves us time and or sometimes makes things more difficult depending on what it is, the fact that we can see somebody we know and we know what they do and we have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them, to me, that that's the whole uh, value of living in a town like Santa Clarita. There's people like you and, and Mission Valley Bank that are doing such great work for people 
And it, it's kind of uh, comforting and fun to run into people that we know in a variety of different professions that we have those one-on-one -on -one relationships with. And I mean, it, it's, it's sad to say that that's almost kind of quaint now because the world we live in moves so fast and technology plays such a huge part and it allows you to be kind of impersonal if you choose to and sort of ignore things you don't want to deal with. But I think it's one of the greatest strengths we have here in the SCV, organizations like yours and people like you that allow us that chance to have that one-on-one -on -one connection. It, it's so, it, it, again, my wife and I talk about it all the time. It is one of the best things about living here in the Santa Cruz Valley. No, with, without a doubt. It, Tamara, I was, I was hoping you could kind of maybe give us a, an overview of, of what actually has occurred the last six months. I mean, you know, we always hear the, the talking points of PPP and CARES, but what exactly has happened since COVID kicked off from a, a banking standpoint and the money that's been made available to businesses that are struggling? And what do we see getting ready to come out of you know, legislation now. What do we see coming for the next couple months while we're still in this tiered, tiered reopening program here in California? Uh, yes. So um, obviously, with the pandemic uh, hitting us and and people shuttering, businesses shuttering completely uh, in mid March, we like like everyone else, uh, within 24 hours, we were uh, set up uh, almost entirely remotely. However, having branches that were considered essential, we needed to uh, maintain the branches being open. And so some people did have to uh, come to work. We shortened our hours to uh, eliminate as much um, you know, personal one-on-one -on -one contact as possible and utilize drive-up and ATMs where we could, um, and then by appointment. So that's worked really well. People have slowly come back to the office. We just started, because you couldn't go to a client's business, we started outreach. So we uh, just assigned everyone uh, the responsibility of a list of, of client names to reach out and call and see, how are you doing? What do you need from us? What can we do to help? And I think the biggest uh, time amount of time spent has obviously been on the credit side, because this has been a significant uh, sure. impact to all businesses uh, being shuttered for a period of time. Many are open, but many are still closed. And we do have a number of clients in the restaurant, hospitality, gym space that are um, having a difficult time. One of the things we did, uh, there was so much of a rush to get into that first uh, tranche of the PPP. We were trying to counsel some of those industries that knew were going to imp be impacted for a longer term to maybe, if they could, hold off. Uh, that we felt strongly there would be a second round, um, but we also needed to be thoughtful to say, you know, if there's not, we don't want you to, to miss an opportunity. If you need the money immediately, then go for it. But what we found was uh, for a gym, for example, taking money in the first round and and they open for a week and they're closed and they're still closed. And now they've run out of the PPP money, so they're trying to look for other sources. What's coming down the pike, uh, if Congress can get their act together, which is <laughs> a big if, <laughs> uh, we've got the HEALS Act. Uh, you know, the, the Republicans and Democrats are kind of uh, at, at odds over how much money should be allocated in this next round. I think they're about two trillion dollars apart in their numbers. Oh, is that all? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just a few zeros. <laughs> um, they are talking, and what we're watching very closely for some of our clients that are, have spent the money and now are struggling again with not being able to completely reopen. But it looks like there will be another round of PPP. However, it will be only available to those businesses that can demonstrate that they've had a 35% reduction in revenue since this time last year that's directly attributable to COVID. Um, they were, they're kind of a part that we're talking 50% reduction in revenue. I think it's going to land on the 35. So that will help a lot of businesses, uh, even though they've got, they had PPP money in the first or second tranche. If they meet that criteria, they can apply in this next round. Um, you know, Congress came back to vote money to the postal system in all of this noise, political noise, but they didn't, you know, they came back and allocated money for that, and they didn't address these two pieces of legislation that need to be merged together and sent to the president for signature. So we're really hopeful that that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. But right now, again, they're away on, on their summer break. So um, 
while we sit here, especially in California, with so many businesses shuttered, it's, it's very, very challenging. So, you know, we see a number that are, are starting to struggle, and they're not certain they're going to be able to ever reopen. Mm. Uh, we have a number of businesses that are on uh, payment deferrals. Mm. Or trying, just trying to help in any way we can. We've put uh, three-month principal and interest deferrals on some. Some are just principal deferrals. Uh, trying to be thoughtful on a case-by-case basis of what they need so they don't get too deep. Uh, you know, you defer it for six months, and then that payment has to come back in at some point and, and there might still be stress out there. So uh, we're just working with them one-on-one individually to see what's the best solution that we can provide in the interim until we get a vaccine, until we get, you know, to open our businesses again. Yeah, it, well, I mean, all, all of that that you just covered, Tamara, is so technical and requires so much knowledge. And again, back to our original thought, you're such a comfort to people because right there in that explanation, you have delivered tons of information that people want to hear and need to hear. And it's coming from someone who's an expert in the field. You're right in the middle of the fray and you're the one getting this, this information, you know, sort of diluted and figured out and delivered to people where they can figure it out. So it's really, I can't thank you enough for being able to explain that to everybody, which is no, fantastic. That, a- absolutely. You know, Ed and I just make it up as we go and that's not going to help anybody who needs a serious answer but Tamara thank, thank you so much for joining us this morning you're listening to V in Action with your hosts Jason Gibbs and Ed Masterson on your hometown station 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS joining us at the 10 o'clock hour is none other than Mr. Jared McKenna from the city of Santa Clarita like all of us has been dealing with COVID-19 and trying to figure out how they can help local businesses keep on track an up-and-coming leader in our community and a fellow roaster at the Elks Lodge. Stay tuned to hear what is happening at City Hall. Be right back. Done plumbing, it's Eric. Son, it's Mother. You know my neighbor Eunice called last night, and she said she was having an oh-no moment. What's that? It's when the you-know-what hits the fan. Eunice's toilet backed up, her water heater broke down, and she realized she's starting to grow a mustache. Well, we can fix two of those. Uh, Have her order our 73 Ritz Free Drain Clearing. You know, it flows or it's free with a money-back guarantee. And uh, for her water heater problem, oh, tell her to check out our money-saving coupons. You know, on the Dutton Plumbing website, Mom, there's a bunch of them. Just about any plumbing problem will fix those oh-no moments. Great. Now, do we have something to clear up her mustache problem? It's kind of bushy. Mom! DuttonPlumbing.com With plumber so clean, you send them to your mom. DuttonPlumbing.com Get mom 73 or it's free drain clearing at DuttonPlumbing.com Remember, it flows or it's free with a money back guarantee. DuttonPlumbing.com Our trash has got to go somewhere, and Chiquita Canyon Landfill is helping make the Santa Clarita Valley a little greener. Our local landfill creates clean energy from our waste disposal to power 10,000 homes each year. With their 9.2 megawatt clean energy facility harnessing the landfill's methane gas, you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. This is Jason Gibbs, the host of Via in Action. Join fellow VIA member Ed Masterson with us every Wednesday from 9 to 11 as we interview business, education, and community leaders to discuss the current economic climate and how the Valley Industry Association can help move your business forward. Meet and hear from elected officials, big and small business operators, and nonprofit organizations who are the economic engines in Santa Clarita and see how you can help your business and community thrive. Hey there, it's Story with your hometown station weather. Nice day today with sunny skies, highs in the mid to upper 90s, overnight lows in the 60s. Tomorrow starts triple digits for five straight days. By Sunday, we could see temperatures reach 111. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, go to hometownstation.com or find us on social media at KHTS Radio. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back, Santa Clarita. You're listening to Via in Action on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm your host, Jason Gibbs. Along with me, fellow soon-to-be White Claw enthusiast, Mr. Ed 
Dave Masterson. I, I am. I, you know, I, was, I was mentioning to you that <laughs> n now that our son's home for the summertime from college, White Claw seems to be one of the uh, beverages of choice among he and his friends, and there's some in the fridge. I'm going to steal one later today and try it out. Okay, you're going to make them try a Smirnoff Ice just so they know what it's like to cross generation like that? Well, I'm not proud of this, but over the last <laughs> couple of years of tailgating at USC football games, I have now indoctrinated all of my son Gage's friends into whiskey sours for tailgating, which are really good. So, Boy, that's not messing around at a tailgate, Ed. And you got to do it the right way. Even though you're tailgating, you have to bring all the ingredients, and there always has to be a maraschino cherry. Not the new cherries that everybody <laughs> puts in them now, which are these weird purple things. It's an old-school, big, red maraschino cherry goes in a whiskey sour. All I heard was, back in my day... <laughs> This is not even my day. This is all his friends are now disciples of the whiskey sour for tailgating. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to elevate my game because for the tailgate, like you said, Jason, that is taking another step up. Usually, it's nothing more than canned beverages, so Thank I'm gonna you. have to step it up. Shane, we bring a full bar, and I'll even tell you about Walter Cronkite if you come tailgating with us someday. I'll join you. Yeah, and you're sure. gonna want one of those whiskey sours if he goes into that story. <laughs> I <laughs> Oh my God! Where do we come up with this stuff? Well, you know, you're uh, you're uh, an engaging guy, and you're from the Santa Barbara area, as we said, home to the Habit, the but hamburger chains. It is yeah. beautiful beaches that I frequently drove by because there's no air conditioning and the car blocks the sun, and I'm a redhead, so I lose that battle every time. See, I don't I don't see the redhead thing. You look like uh, not a redhead. I don't see that, but you keep saying you are, so I guess. Well, I burn like one. Okay. If it's guys. <laughs> <laughs> that just is what it is. Man, I get sunburned if I go get spray tans, Ed. It's not good. Okay, Shane and Marvin, what's your favorite <laughs> drinks? If you guys are out, like, say, at a sporting event, what is your favorite drink of choice? Not not counting what you will learn about the whiskey sour. What's your current drink of choice, Marvin? Well, for Marvin, I'll have to grab him in a second. We'll get his answer over the break. But at least for me, I, you know, they sell, they sell white closet stadiums now. It's, it's pretty good, but if I'm going to get something while I'm out, I'll actually go for a beer. Some type of IPA, something that I don't usually get from the store at home. Okay. Even if it costs me, you know, the, the 28 to $39 at an LA <laughs> venue, you know, I'll, I'll, sp I'll spend the big bucks and get it. That's very funny, actually, because that's probably about the right price range that you're mentioning if you're out somewhere. I, it's, it's a little bit of sarcasm, but also unfortunately not. <laughs> Ed, what, what was the beer on tap at uh, Universal Studios when you were a tour guide? Let's see, Jason, I'm trying to think where beer was served on property, with not counting the restaurants, of course. I don't know that they sold beer in the park that you could just have. Now they do, of course. In some of those shops, like up there by where the Simpsons land is, you can get beer and stuff like that. But back in the old days when I was at Universal, I, they didn't pour beer in the park, I don't think. I could be wrong. You had to go to, like, Victoria Station, Wapoppers, Fung Lam, which was a great Chinese restaurant that was there. Those were, like, the three restaurants that we had to push on the tour because they were all owned by the studio, so they, you know... They wanted you to get people to go to those restaurants. So. Now, wait a minute. Like 15 years ago, I stopped by one of the, I think it was like a Simpsons booth or yeah. something, and I got a Duff beer. Sure, they have beer there, but it, but it, again, when I was working there as a tour guide, Simpsons hadn't been invented. That was pre-Simpsons, so <laughs> you know there were there were not. Wait, no, 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 oh, no, yeah. no. When I was on the tour, it was 1982 to 1985. Then I take that back. Yes, yes, yes. There, there were no Simpsons but, in 85. Put it this way: on the tour, when you went through the ice tunnel. We, we used to talk about the $6 million man as if that was kind of a cool, relevant show at that time. So that tells you how many decades ago it was man, when I was tour guide. That's when $6 million was a lot of money. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, now he'd have to be the $47 billion man, right? <laughs> I well, thought it's only a couple of commas or zeros like we were talking about with That's Tamar, right. Tamara. That's right. Tamara had it right. It's only a few more All zeros. Right. That's funny. Now, wait. I, I, I dared you the other day. Do you remember the, uh, the intro you gave to everybody before you turned the car on on the tram? Sure. I know we've only got one minute, so I'll do it quick. It'd be, hey, welcome everybody to Universal. It's great to see you. I'm Ed. I'm going to be your tour guide. Great to have you joining us here today. A couple safety rules before we get started. <laughs> If you have any small children, make sure you seat them towards the middle of the seats, not on the edges. Make sure you keep your hands and arms inside the tram at all times. Of course, there's no smoking. If you drop anything over the side of the tram, don't jump out to get it yourself. Pull that silver <laughs> lanyard emergency cord on the ceiling of the tram. We'll stop and grab it for you. Take all the pictures you want today, as long as they're not for commercial purposes. And hey, look, we're making our first turn, and there's the back lot right down there below us. <laughs> Nailed the dismount. 10 out of 10. Thank I, you. I could start clapping. Thank you. Ed, you're, you're natural. You're ready to get back into it. Join us after the break. We'll have Jared McKenna from the city of Santa Clarita talking to us about COVID, business, and what the city's doing to help us all move forward. Stay tuned.
Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. This is Jason Gibbs, the host of Via in Action. Join fellow VIA member Ed Masterson with us every Wednesday from 9 to 11 as we interview business, education, and community leaders to discuss the current economic climate and how the Valley Industry Association can help move your business forward. Meet and hear from elected officials, big and small business operators, and nonprofit organizations who are the economic engines in Santa Clarita and see how you can help your business and community thrive. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 10 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. The campaign contrast. On Lisa Brady, Fox News. The challenger focusing on school safety as the president speaks from a battleship. Fox's John Decker is live in Washington. President Trump heading down to the battleground state of North Carolina where he'll visit the city of Wilmington and designate the city as the first American World War II heritage city. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden will be in Wilmington, Delaware where he'll meet with public health experts to talk about school reopening options. The Biden campaign announcing earlier that the Democratic presidential nominee will visit Kenosha. Wisconsin tomorrow to hold a community meeting and address the racial unrest in the city. The campaign announcement coming a day after President Trump visited Kenosha to survey buildings damaged in recent protests and express support for law enforcement. Lisa? John, a new poll shows a tightening race in one battleground state, with Joe Biden holding a four-point lead now in Pennsylvania. The Monmouth University poll finding support for Biden slipping among men, voters under age 50, and voters in key swing counties. Also just in a big fundraising hall for Biden, more than $364 million in August. That includes money raised by the Democratic National Committee, and it's more than double what Biden raised in July. A new flag will be on the ballot in Mississippi, a special commission reviewing the finalists just voting directly recommend one with a magnolia, the state flower. Mississippi's governor and legislature decided this year it was time for the state to adopt a new flag, one without Confederate imagery. Since then, designs have been posted and commented upon. If voters reject it, the design process starts again, and Mississippi will go longer with no flag. Fox's Evan Brown. Help wanted in August. U.S. businesses adding more than 400,000 jobs in the latest survey from payroll processor ADP, but that's fewer than economists hope for a few days before the government's employment report. Still, the Dow's up 252. America is listening to Fox News. Allstate now has deeper savings, and deeper savings require deep thoughts and a deep voice, like mine. Save for being a new customer. Save more for adding drive-wise. And save even more for driving safely. Visit Allstate.com or contact your local agent for a quote today. As someone once said, Saving today is money tomorrow. That's deep. Not available in every state. New customer savings based on early signing discount. Buy buys is an optional feature. Savings vary based on how you buy. Subject to terms and conditions. All state and casualty insurance company affiliates. North Brook, Illinois. So who is your wireless provider? AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile? The average person is saving $400 a year by switching to Pure Talk USA. Pure Talk is on the same network, same towers, just 50% off in terms of price. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and 2 gigs of data for just 20 bucks a month. Switch to Pure Talk today. Now, from your cell phone, dial pound 250 and say Pure Radio. That's pound 250, Pure Radio, Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. The State Department slapping new sanctions on the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Calling the International Criminal Court a thoroughly broken and corrupted institution. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced sanctions on the tribunal's chief prosecutor as well as a top aide. We will not tolerate its illegitimate attempts to subject Americans to its jurisdiction. 
Secretary Pompeo said anyone trying to assist Fatou bin Souda in investigating U.S. soldiers will also face sanctions, including restrictions on visas. The ICC is probing whether American forces committed war crimes in Afghanistan. Human rights groups have condemned the Trump administration's actions against the court. Rachel Sutherland. Fox News. International pressure ramping up on Russia as doctors in Germany confirm their findings that the same Soviet-era nerve agent used on a former spy in Britain is also what poisoned a Russian opposition leader who remains hospitalized in Germany. The Kremlin is calling on Germany for a full sharing of information. Russian doctors initially disputed reports of Alexei Navalny being poisoned. The White House says it will work with the international community to hold accountable those responsible for the poisoning in Russia. Germany has has summoned Russia's ambassador. A tradition resumes in Vatican City. Nella solidarietà. For the first time since going into the coronavirus lockdown six months ago, Pope Francis holds his weekly general audience in front of the public. With the event taking place in the courtyard instead of St. Peter's Square with a maximum of 500 visitors, the leader of the Catholic Church saying, quote, after many months we resume our meeting face-to-face, not screen-to-screen, but face-to-face, this is beautiful. His last public appearance was held at the end of February. The Pope returns 84 December, has been doing his addresses from his private library instead of the Vatican with that message streamed online and no one from the public was present. Fox's CJ Papa. Again, a rally on Wall Street for the Dow up more than 240. I'm Lisa Brady, and this is Fox News. This is Bradley from Santa Clarita Grocery, the all-volunteer grocery program serving children, families, and individuals experiencing food insecurities. Since January 2020, Santa Clarita Grocery has distributed 83 tons of fresh groceries to 4,465 families in the SCV. Santa Clarita Grocery is a drive-up, drive-through service with physical distancing in place to continue serving our community. If you are in need or looking for a charity to do the most good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery, one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. A full 99 cents out of every dollar goes directly back to the community. Santa Clarita Grocery operates on a 1% overhead and is sustained through private donations. Santa Clarita Grocery is at 21176 Center Point Parkway in the Oasis Furniture Parking Lot. Please visit our website, SantaClaritaGrocery.org or Facebook at Santa Clarita Grocery to make a difference in our awesome town community. 661-425-7575. Be our guest and experience the difference. Welcome to Duncan. There are two Duncan locations in the SCV. Both locations have outdoor seating, carry out service, and delivery with Postmates, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. Use the Duncan app to order and accumulate points. The Canyon Country location on Sierra Highway near Via Princesa has drive through service and is open till 7 p.m. The Bouquet Canyon location just off Newhall Ranch Road has curbside service and is now open till 7 p.m. This Santa Clarita Valley runs on Duncan. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank. And I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. This is Jill from the Santa Clarita Grocery, the all-volunteer grocery program serving children, families, and individuals experiencing food insecurities. Since January 2020, Santa Clarita Grocery has distributed 83 tons of fresh groceries to our 4,655 families in the SCV community. Santa Clarita Grocery is a drive-up, drive-through service with physical distancing in place to continue serving our community. If you are in need or looking for a charity to do the most good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to 
to Santa Clarita Grocery, one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. A full 99 cent out of every dollar goes directly back to the community. Santa Clarita Grocery operates on a 1% overhead and is sustained through private donations. Santa Clarita Grocery is at 21176 Center Point Parkway in the Oasis Furniture Parking Lot. Please visit our website at SantaClaritaGrocery.org or our Facebook at Santa Clarita Grocery to make a difference in our awesome town community. 425-7575. Be our guest and experience the difference. This is Jason Gibbs, the host of Via in Action. Join fellow VIA member Ed Masterson with us every Wednesday from 9 to 11 as we interview business, education, and community leaders to discuss the current economic climate and how the Valley Industry Association can help move your business forward. Meet and hear from elected officials, big and small business operators, and nonprofit organizations who are the economic engines in Santa Clarita and see how you can help your business and community thrive. Hi, I'm Miles McNamara, Certified Senior Advisor and Owner of Comfort Keepers and Home Care. Our caregivers help you in your own home. A Comfort Keeper can provide companionship, meal preparation, medication monitoring, assistance with personal care, transportation to doctor appointments, all enhancing your independence and safety and the comfort and privacy of your own home. So if you or someone you love could use a helping hand at home, call Comfort Keepers at 287-4200. That's 287-4200. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high-quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies, as well as board-certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. For more information, call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. Do you suffer from peripheral neuropathy in your hands or feet? One drug after another, continuing numbness, tingling, burning pain, balance problems, decreased quality of life? Are you experimenting with drugs like Lyrica, Neurontin, Gabapentin, Cymbalta with limited success and your doctor telling you you just have to live with it? My name is Dr. Thomas Pilecki, DC, host of Get Better with Dr. Pilecki and founder of Neuropathy Dr. X. I'm here to tell you that there is now a non-invasive natural solution to your neuropathy right here in Santa Clarita, a solution that addresses the underlying causes and we're proud to say that we have an 87 to 97% success rate with neuropathy sufferers in getting their lives back. I'd like to invite you to our next seminar, when we'll teach you how to reverse this deadly condition that affects over 50 million Americans today. To reserve your spot now, call 753-9340. This is a free seminar, but seating is limited, so call 753-9340 now. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, the Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. Your hometown station. It's no secret that KHTS has the best midday talk show lineup around. If you've missed any of your favorites, no problem. KHTS has you covered. Podcasts for all the midday shows can be found right on our website, hometownstation.com. Whether you missed a show from two days, two weeks, two months, or two years ago, and you want to catch up, we got you covered. They're all right there. Plus extra podcasts, too. That's hometownstation.com. Hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Consumers Furniture is back open for your business. The safety of our community and our staff, above all, is most important to us. We will provide a safe and clean environment for you to find the perfect piece of furniture for your home. To help you with your purchase, we are offering 25% off your entire order or 24 months same as cash financing. And for our awesome essential workers, we will deliver locally your furniture free of charge. Consumers Furniture is located in the Centerpoint Shopping Center, 
below Sam's Club and Walmart. Step into a hot shower or slip on a warm t-shirt fresh from the dryer and you can feel the comfort natural gas gives us every day. For over 100 years, Southern California Gas Company has provided safe, reliable natural gas service. It warms our homes, powers cleaner vehicles, and cooks our food at a fraction of the cost of other energy sources with less environmental impact. Today and for decades to come. Natural gas, part of the clean energy solution. Learn more at SoCalGas.com. Search solution. Hey there, it's Story with your hometown station weather. Nice day today with sunny skies, highs in the mid to upper 90s, overnight lows in the 60s. Tomorrow starts triple digits for five straight days. By Sunday, we could see temperatures reach 111. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, go to hometownstation.com or find us on social media at KHTS Radio. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome back to VN Action on the second hour today. I am your host, Jason Gibbs, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS. Joining me again to help me fill in the commercial breaks while we try to find guests to call in, Mr. Ed Masterson. Thank you, Jason. I'm always here at your beck and call to just, you know, track people down going by on the street and see if they'll <laughs> give us a call. Well, that's why I needed you. I needed you to pull up your Rolodex on your cell phone and start begging people to come on the show. I... We thought about asking Shane to come on, but he wouldn't do it. Well, <laughs> he's got his hands full enough with us, I think. Figured I was already here, but I don't know how much I'd have to offer in the realm of VIA or in terms of long-term, you know, business planning. So I figured I'd, uh, I'd pass. Well, VIA wonders that about Ed and I, too. All right, no more jokes. VIA in Action is a show dedicated to informing our community about the Valley Industry Association, or commonly known as VIA. The events and programs we produce and having guests on the show who have both shaped and benefited from the various activities what we have put on. We invite you to check us out at www.via.org. That's via.org. And come learn about our programs, committees, and ways to step up your business. Now, I'm extremely excited about our next guest, Ed. Uh, I originally tried to get Jared McKenna to come on. Now, he's the assistant to the city manager. But we had to settle for Mr. Frank Oviedo, the assistant city manager. It's a good upgrade, I think, right? Is it? Is it I don't know if it's an upgrade or down. Well, you know, we're going to let Frank go ahead and clear that up for us here in, in uh, just a moment. I love Jared, though. We don't want Jared to feel like we don't love him because well, he's phenomenal. But but Frank is really kind of, I think, uh, Frank Frank's a great get for us. Well, though. look, we'll, we'll let him explain to us why he's such a great guest in a minute. But, uh, you know, I, I feel so bad. I had all these wonderful intro lines and things I could say about Jared. But since he's not here, I'm going to have to save them for the next show. But I'll just let you know that Frank and I, we got to spend a weekend together just like with Matt Nelson up at Big Creek this past mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Such a fabulous trip, and, and Frank was such, such so much fun to be there with. And, you know, I'd sit there and talk to him about city business, and every once in a while he'd say, uh, now, Jason, don't tell Ken I told you this. But mm. And then he wouldn't say anything, and he'd walk out of the room. So I didn't <laughs> get any skinny on anything. Mr. Frank Oviedo, welcome to the show. Thanks, bud. Uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Frank, thanks for calling in for us. We, we appreciate it very much. You're yeah. the man. You're starting to uh, wi- I'm not even sure how to respond to that. Yeah, you're, you're starting to wish you didn't have cell service, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm, I think I might be falling out of cell service any minute See? now, depending on what's said after this. That's why I like Frank. <laughs> don't, don't worry, Frank. I'm, I'm here, man. I've got your back on this in case Gibbs tries to go off track too much. I've got you. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. Good. I appreciate it. I go by Gibbs now, apparently. <laughs> I'm really coming to my own. Frank, man, thanks for being with us today. If, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, uh, you know, we, we were sitting there just kind of making jokes. But, Frank, man, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to Santa Clarita and, and got roped into hanging out with Mr. Striplin all day. Well, it's interesting to I, when somebody asked me that question. I, I've had, I've actually known Ken for over 25 years. We started our careers together in Santa Clarita. And uh, we were both hired as analysts many, many moons ago. And uh, I've, I left the city for over a decade and then came back. And while I was gone, I took a job uh, up in Northern California in the city of Elk Grove. I was the assistant to the city manager. I was the Jared in Elk Grove oh, for a time. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, then I was promoted to deputy city manager, so I had oversight of all the public works operations and the planning operations in the city. And so I really cut my teeth in a fast-growing city that you could make a lot of comparisons to Santa Clarita. And so 
After that, I left to the city of Wildemar. It was a new city that had just incorporated in Riverside County. It was approximately 32,000 residents. Uh, it was my first city manager job, so my first opportunity to really uh, get that title. And I loved it, had a great time. You know, my timing was really bad because I... I, I, I took the job uh, at the uh, at the right in the middle of the recession, and then uh, I managed to get them financially stable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ken Striplin had an assistant city manager job open because he had ascended to the job of city manager, and uh, I ended up coming back to Santa Clarita. And I, I never thought I'd actually end up back in Santa Clarita, but uh, it, it just worked out that way. My wife actually grew up in Santa Clarita, went to Hart High School, mm -hmm. and it seemed to be a good fit. So I joined Ken as he was putting his uh, executive team together as in his first year as a city manager, and here I am. I'm back. Well, <laughs> That's the 30-second version. I like it. That, yeah, it's great. And Frank, you know what, man? We're so lucky to have you. You're such a good guy. All kidding aside, you're just one of those guys, and it, it's not surprising based on all the background you just filled us in on about how you have, you know, your career and all the various things you've gone through in terms of experience. You're just one of those guys like Ken as well, both of you. You're, you're very laid back, calm. Uh, you know, you take things in stride. You get things done. That's an understatement. City does a terrific job on getting things done. But it's really, we're great to have you. Really, I, that's, that's from the heart. It's always great to see you around town at all the different events you guys are always present and and participating and we really appreciate uh all you do for us here in town plus the great relationship that the city has with via so yeah yeah absolutely no and, uh, you're making me blush yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey on radio no no one can see that you're fine but now frank now that now that we've been talking the question everyone wants to know what is the difference between an assistant city manager and an assistant to the city manager because you're no dwight k schrute <laughs> Well, it, and it's interesting. You know, I used to have an ongoing joke when I was up in Northern California in El Grove. Uh, they, they'd ask me that question, and I'd say, oh, about $50,000. <laughs> 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 uh, but in, in, in all seriousness, um, the way the council manager relationship works uh, in a city such as Santa Clarita is that Ken really is the direct contact with the elected officials. He is the day-to-day -day chief executive who handles all the policy initiatives that the council is interested in. He's in constant contact with them. He's ultimately pulls the trigger on what we take to council, uh, you know, and how we take it to council. He's, he's, he's the big guy. The assistant city manager has day-to-day -day operational responsibility. So each department within the city uh, is, as you can imagine, transacting, you know, hundreds and thousands of contracts and budget transfers and needs okays on, you know, I, I, I literally spend half my day, I just refinanced my home and I left work only to come home to a, a, a notary and I kept signing. I, and I told her, I said, all I do all day is sign documents. <laughs> and so uh, I spent a lot of time making sure that the day-to-day -day operations are running smoothly so that Ken can focus on the big picture items that the council is interested in terms of what's going on in the city. So that's Ken and I's relationship. Jared works for directly for Ken, but he also works for me as well. So all the loose ends, all the things that need to be done that uh, we're giving direction on, Jared's the go-to guy. Oftentimes, I never leave my office because I have people streaming into my office on, for various different things, and Jared's the one that goes and actually executes a lot of that stuff. He goes and makes sure that the directors have what they need, or if there's a follow-up from a council agenda item, Jared takes care of those things. He does have direct responsibility for managing the sheriff's contract, um, and so that he does have responsibility for, and he does have uh, supervisory uh, responsibility for all the uh, admin uh, staff and our executive assistants that work uh, for us in the city manager's office and the council. So he's got he's kind of a, in football terms, he's kind of a rover back. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's, uh, we recruited him as an athlete. He doesn't have any specific skills, but he can get things done. And he moves around the field, and he'll get to wherever you need him to go. That was amazing. So, so that's really how we all work. And when we're firing on all cylinders, it's, you know, if I, if I, I do say so uh, myself, we're, we can be pretty effective on a daily basis between the three of us as we work in very closely together and making sure all this stuff is getting done. Yeah. Now, okay, aside, since he's not here to defend himself, he does, what you're saying is he does more than just go get lunch. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, and, I, and I think I had. More than get lunch. I, I think I had on my list that he he mentioned on a video I saw that he was actually in charge of develop the, being the front man for the development of the annual budget and some of the long term strategic planning. That that's correct as well, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And and that's a very important role. I that's a role that I played when I was in Elk Grove. Is that I had the direct responsibility for helping the city manager put the uh, strategic plan together, and then uh, direct responsibility for coordinating the whole budget, uh, uh, putting the whole budget together on an annualized basis. And we've gotten so big that it is an annual process now. It Absolutely. used to be a budget season. We don't have a budget season anymore. Budget season is literally year-round because by the time we finish the budget, we go into summer, and then right when we come back from the hiatus, we're already working on um, on the, um, the mid-year adjustments that will have to be made and that we take to council sometime in December. That's, that's it. And Frank, now, now speaking of budgets, Kind of with everything, the kind of the theme that we've had here on VA in Action is, is talking about what the different businesses are handling and how they're handling, you know, COVID-19, the pandemic, and the various challenges that we're seeing and how they can reopen and restructure. How has that impacted the city from not just your operations, but how you can help and how you are able to help small businesses and the filming industry? How, what, what are we seeing happen at City Hall on that front? Sure. One of the first things we talked about once the shutdown was being, you know, and it, before we actually went to the shutdown and we were hearing what was happening up in Washington State and there was already rumblings that, hey, they're going to start shutting things down or requiring shutdown. We, uh, as an executive team, Ken brought all the directors together. And one of the first things we talked about is, and, and it was really interesting because we have a, a, the, a an analyst that works with Jared as well in the office, uh, Rebecca Whittison, uh, who's, who's a has played a very key role during this pandemic. Um, and every time there's a health order comes down, she's responsible for interpreting it, briefing Ken and I, and then weeks so we can formulate what we're going to talk to the directors about on how to operate, keep the continuity of our operations going. Well, Rebecca is also responsible for emergency uh, preparedness uh, in our office. And it was interesting because right before all this stuff happened, one of the things that we were starting to put together that we really needed, we had a small plan, but we needed a more robust plan that she was responsible for, was the continuity of government. So it was really interesting. We were already having conversations. And one of the first things we talked about is how do we keep our businesses going during a, a serious emergency? And so almost right out of the chute, the first conversations was were if – Cities need permits, or cities, if businesses need permits for whatever it is they're needing from the city, we need to make sure that that still happens during this pandemic. So we made a commitment right out of the chute to, for anybody doing construction, any type of, uh, you know, tenant improvements so that businesses could continue operating, not knowing where this was all going, we wanted to keep that going. So we engage the building department to make sure that all the developments in the city were going to continue to go happen. Any businesses in our industrial parks that were in the middle of tenant improvements because they were going to expand their operations or were coming to the city for the first time, that none of that would be halted. And so that, that was one of the first things, and we're very proud that we were able to keep that going without a hiccup. Now, we had to do it in a different way because – you know, there, there couldn't be any in-person contact or limited yeah. in-person contact. So we started looking at how we already had the ability to review plan documents via a computer. Um, and so we just expanded that during this period of time. Um, we uh, made appointments so we could do one-on-one -on -one appointments so that you wouldn't have to wait in lines at City Hall if you were just coming in, you know, at the spur of the moment. So we started really looking at all those operations to make sure that our businesses were taken care of because we know that they are the lifeblood of our community. They employ our residents. They provide the tax dollars that help us put concerts in the park and put our sheriffs out on the street to protect our families. We know how important the business community is. So that was a, a big part of making sure that we, we didn't stop those operations just because of this pandemic. Oh, Frank, that's, man, boy, I, in here I, I'm sitting here trying to think of more jokes to say, and he lays all that out on us, and I got nothing. That was incredible. Well, 
<laughs> was that too heavy? I can see that. No, I, 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 I gotta take a breath here, Frank. Right? Nothing happened. Most of our most of our conversations are kind of lighthearted. That was real to the point. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, that that was that was some pretty <laughs> solid information, Frank. <clears throat> Thank you for doing that. And it's <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat. Do you ever get a day off, really? I mean, all the things you just mentioned and all the responsibilities that you have on your shoulders. Do you ever feel like you actually ever get a day off, or it's pretty much a 24-hour day thing when it comes to the position? You know. It, it's really interesting. Just uh, put the pandemic aside, and I'll address that in a second. But uh, what I tell people, y young, fresh out of college individuals who want to go into uh, city management, uh, I put Jared and Rebecca in there in, in that uh, in that category. Is I remind them that this is an around the clock job. You know, just yeah. because we might leave the office, uh, you know, after city hall closes at five o'clock, and you know, we're leaving the office. Is you never stop working, especially because we live in the community. I'll, you know, uh, my son runs cross country club, uh, cross country, so I'll drive to Central Park to drop him off, uh, and I'm looking at the grass. <laughs> it looks like there's a brown spot on the grass. Do we have an irrigation problem? You know, I'll contact our uh, our parks maintenance staff uh, via email or text that at, literally at that moment. <laughs> Um, I see uh, a median that maybe hasn't uh, been taken care of uh, or, or it looks like maybe there's an irrigation problem or there's too much growth in the plants. And so I'll contact our LMDs and say, hey, what's going on there? You know, Kevin Tenoy and you guys know Kevin. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're, you're always working. You're always, you never stop thinking about your community because you live here. I'm raising my kids in the community and I take my job serious as a heart attack because I, I know how important the beautification of the community is and we get high marks on that and we like anybody you want to keep your edge you don't ever want to you know rest on your laurels because that's when you stop doing all the good things or thinking about those good things then the pandemic hit and then i really never stopped working <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it was it was tough I'll, I'll tell you you know we we immediately as you all know uh you know sent our staff home we kept the essential people that we felt we needed to keep the continuity of the city going uh you know i'll do a shout out to our street maintenance folks boy they just you know just because there was a pandemic you know we needed to make sure that you know and i know a lot of people weren't driving at the time um but we also said hey if there's opportunities because not as many cars are on the street to do some of the repairs now. Let's do that. Um, so, you know, we're, and, and Ken and I were in the office every day during the pandemic. Uh, you know, we, our office staff were in the office. Take all the phones throughout the whole city were directed to the city manager's office. Yep. So we put a whole plan together so that any key decisions that had to be made, Ken was at his desk. Even when the, we were in full shutdown and it seemed like Armageddon because we'd look out the window on Valencia Boulevard and you'd see one car every 25 minutes. Yep. Uh, it was eerie, but we knew we needed to be there just in case, just in case. And as we were trying to work through some of the bugs of how you shut down a $200-plus million operation because of this and not knowing what was, when it was going to end, Ken and I made sure, along with Jared and Rebecca and some of our key staff, uh, Carrie Lujan, our communications manager, because we needed to make sure we were communicating with our residents. Um, we were all there, and we were ready to go, and we were making decisions the whole time. And it was, it was, it was a, it's tough, and we're still in that mode a little bit, but we're, uh, you know, we, we never stop working. I guess maybe that's the, yeah. <laughs> the, the message. No, and, and, I, and I think that's the key point that, Frank, success is not an accident. You know, this, this city, and I've always complimented this city. It, it, you guys do an amazing job. Uh, it, the, the reason that we have been so fortunate that even during pandemics and recessions that we have stayed staffed, that we've stayed clean, that we've stayed beautified is, is because of dedication. And I know I know you and Ken and Jared are all instrumental in part of that. So from Ed and I both, thank you, Frank. Thank you for calling in and joining us this morning. We'll, we'll keep ripping on Jared a little bit during the next, the next break here. Yeah. But in the meantime, everybody, you're listening to VIA in Action. I'm Jason Gibbs with my co-host Ed Masterson on your hometown station, 98.1 FM and AM 1220 K. HTS. After the break, you'll be joining us uh, to have Miles McNamara, the president and owner of Comfort Keepers in Home Care. He'll be joining Via in Action to discuss how home care for our senior population is shifting and adapting to the pandemic environment, the benefits of this fantastic business, and perhaps a quick look into the famed Hollywood life Miles once lived out. Don't go away. 
Join us this fall for online fun with the Canyon Theater Guild Online Youth Workshops. Super fun classes with acting, singing, dancing, audition tips, script writing, scene study, improv, and putting on real shows created for online performance. Get creative, meet new friends, and most of all, have a blast from the comfort of your own home. Call 661-799-2702 or ctgworkshops at gmail.com or canyontheater.org. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, the Way Out Recovery SEV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. This is Jason Gibbs, the host of Via in Action. Join fellow VIA member Ed Masterson with us every Wednesday from 9 to 11 as we interview business, education, and community leaders to discuss the current economic climate and how the Valley Industry Association can help move your business forward. Meet and hear from elected officials, big and small business operators, and nonprofit organizations who are the economic engines in Santa Clarita and see how you can help your business and community thrive. Today for lunch, why not try The Sandwich Shop, located on Avenue Stamford, right off Rye Canyon. The Sandwich Shop offers dozens of hot or cold, affordable, premium deli sandwiches. Gourmet soups and salads are also available. Regulars indulge in the cheesy focaccia rolls, which is a customer favorite. Then top it off with owner Charlie Chung's chunky chocolate chip cookies. Breakfast and catering is also available. The Sandwich Shop, since 1983, located on Avenue Stamford, right off Rye Canyon. ValenciaSandwichShop.com to place your order. Facey knows life gets busy. Let us go to work for you in the Santa Clarita Valley. We have 34 primary care physicians and 55 specialty doctors in four offices. And Facey has easy 24-7 online appointment scheduling for PCPs and PEDS with some extended hour appointments available. We are Facey Medical Group. Let us go to work for you today. For more information or to make an appointment, visit Facey.com. That's F-A-C-E-Y.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220, the community's choice. Thank you, KHTS, for keeping me posted with the latest on COVID-19. Welcome back, Santa Clarita. You're listening to Via in Action. I am your host, Jason Gibbs, on our hometown station, 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS. With me still for one final half hour, and then we're going to release him back to the wild, Mr. Ed Masterson. Thank you, Jason. I think now that I've lived among the humans for a while, they won't take me back into the wild. They'll <laughs> reject me, I think. Oh, you'll learn to assimilate. You'll be fine. Be in Action is a show dedicated to informing our community about the Valley Industry Association, or better known as VIA. The events and programs we produce and having guests on the show who have both shaped and benefited from the various activities we put on. We have a rich and wonderful history here in the Valley since 1981, and our dedicated members have formed long-lasting business and personal relationships that continue to benefit our wonderful town. Please check us out at www.viavia.org and learn about our programs, committees, and ways to step up your business. Our final guest today is the president and owner of Comfort Keepers In-Home Care, fellow VIA board member, and the man who is never shy at a board meeting, Mr. Miles McNamara. Now, before we let Miles give us some vital information about in-home care and the trials and tribulations COVID has brought to senior care in general, I could not help myself and do a little Google searching since my magic mirror from Snow White wasn't working. <laughs> Miles has been an incredible and dedicated board member with VIA, a member of the Henry Mayo Newhall Foundation Board, and a past president of the SCV Senior Center Foundation. 
But amongst his incredible, incredible philanthropy and passion for Santa Clarita, Miles hosted an educational resource video entitled Be the Difference to help friends and families learn the potential signs of suicide and mental health issues. While Ed will be helping me learn about his pre-comfort keeper days spent at Universal Studios as a tour guide, Miles has given so much of himself to the care of our parents and grandparents and to the overall well-being of the many struggling to find the positive in today's world, and that should be recognized and appreciated. Miles, thanks for coming on today. What's up, sports fans? Thanks for having me. Great introduction. God, you want to be my PR guy, Jason? <laughs> done. Done. I've been making stuff up about Ed for the last month, so we can continue this process. <laughs> Miles, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, man. We love having you on. It's, it's your good sport for joining us. Thank you. Well, my pleasure. I mean, uh, caring for our loved ones becomes a challenge in the later days, so I, I love to share the information. No, Miles, and, and we love to hear it, but as I mentioned, I got to know, Ed told me to go on, was it IM, IMDB, IMBD? Yeah, I was trying to avoid that. Well, look, I think you scrubbed it pretty good, because there were two very <laughs> similar names of versions of Miles McNamara and Miles McNamara, one with an I, one for a Y. One seemed to be a superstar of B-Light movies, and the other, I don't know who the other one was, so I, I need some background here, Ed. Well, Jason... Hold on, let me, Miles, <laughs> first of all, you know Jason's trying to throw me under the bus here with this whole thing. <laughs> under the tour bus. Under the, tour, under the tram. But, uh, no, what I told Jason was that w when they started upgrading the live shows over at the studio back in the old days when you and I both worked for Universal, you were one of the terrific announcers, show announcers, that would come out and, and warm up the crowds and get them ready and shows like the A-Team and the Miami Vice thing and all that. that that's kind of what I focused on in terms of your great oratory skills in terms of entertaining, <laughs> in entertaining hundreds of people at a time, which I thought was one of your great, great skills. And you got one of the best senses of humor ever. You're, you're a funny guy. You're very witty. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you choose to share the humor, sometimes not. But you are an incredibly funny guy, and you got, you got great background and experience. So anyway, we were just having a little bit of fun with you on that. But the one thing that I do want to touch on that Jason mentioned as well is through Comfort Keepers, I can say personally I've referred people to you friends of mine who have had loved ones that are coming to that point in life where they need the type of service Comfort Keepers provides. And they always call me back to say how well they were treated and how, how much they appreciated the way they were treated by Comfort Keepers. So that, all joking aside, yes. we really appreciate yes. what Comfort Keepers does, not just for the community here, but I know you, you touch lives outside of our community as well. And just you as the president and owner, for, for, you know, it starts at the top. Leadership starts at the top, trickles down through the group. So we appreciate you very much as an individual. And also, of course, what Comfort Keepers does as an organization. So, thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No, I, I can't. And, uh, and just so you know, I, I'll open Pandora's box here. You were looking <laughs> under the wrong name. I might not share it today, but I didn't work under Miles McNamara. See? I was uh, doing my acting and stuff. I had a I had a stage name under the Screen Actors Guild. So, <laughs> there you go. Well, see, Miles, uh, I respect that. Good for you. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of with a broad brush for our listeners because I think it's so, especially during this pandemic time, kind of give a broad brush, Please. broad brush stroke of, of home care um, because home care is relatively new in the industry of resources for our seniors and such. It's only been around a little over two decades, um, and, and a lot of times people get confused the difference between home health and home care. Uh, and home care was really birthed out of the idea that home health is prescribed by the doctor. The nurses come in uh, on a medical level, and, and they'll do vitals. They'll check on our seniors in the home, but then they're gone in under an hour. And But what we was noticed is uh, something called activities of daily living, is our seniors needed a helping hand with maybe their personal care, taking their medications on time, bathing and showering, uh, meal preparation, uh, standby assist so they don't fall if they are a fall risk. So the, the, the comfort keepers, our caregivers, they provide that helping hand to keep our seniors safely in their own home, which is where they want to be yep. more often than not. They don't want to be placed in a, uh, you know, at a skilled nursing facility or, or something like that. So we allow our seniors to stay in the home. And, and a dynamic that uh, is really prevalent is the great generation who is pre dominantly our, our, our client at this time. They're a very proud generation. They want to be independent. They, want to, you know, they don't want to be a burden to others. And we see a lot of dynamics between our, our adult children and, and their parents, who, of course, are their heroes, who, who need the help but are very resistant to the care. So uh, 
what we try to explain to our seniors is that we don't take away your independence. We enhance your independence. We allow you to stay in your own home, which is why a lot of times we, we, serve, we refer to ourselves as personal assistance or a concierge service, not a caregiver, because caregiver, sure. a lot of times, is synonymous with nurse, which is synonymous with, with, with failing. And, and we, that's not the concept we want to give to our seniors. We are there to keep you in your own home. You're still in charge of your life. We're just that helping hand. Um, and, and sometimes we have to, to help our, our adult children with, with those steps because, you know, there's a lot of times they feel they're on an island. They have no resources. They, they, they don't know where to turn. So my nurse care managers will come in and, and guide them through that process of, of what home care is and how it can help and relieve the stress of our adult children just as much as our seniors. So uh, it, it's really something that we try to say it's proactive as well as reactive. Don't wait till mom falls and breaks a yep, hip. Absolutely. Because we get that a lot. Well, we don't need you yet. Mm -hmm. Well, don't wait until you have to have us. Right. Let us be there to make sure that mom doesn't get dehydrated, that, that dad forgets to take his medications, that they, they slip and fall in the shower, or, or any, you know, any of the above. So we're proactive as well as reactive. And, and so home care really allows our seniors to be where they want to be. And, and Miles, I think just listening to all of that, and I love the concierge uh, element of it that you mentioned. The other thing is, and I noticed this even with myself, you know, my mom is 83. My dad passed away 20 years ago. And I, I'll admit, I'm not, she lives in Whittier, so I'm not that great about seeing her in person as often as I should. And, uh, and one of the things I think we forget, and your people that help out on these things, I think address this so fantastic, is, you know, no matter what age people are, they still want social interaction with people. They still want to have conversations and talk about things and feel like there's some vibrancy in their life. And a lot of times I catch myself going a week without calling my mom and thinking what a crappy son I am, which is true. But but to have somebody from, from a group like Comfort Keepers there with them sharing a variety of things, whether they're helping them out with some of the reminders you mentioned, but... They're also engaging them psychologically and emotionally and allowing them to have like that vibrancy that I think once we all know, once we're separated from that and we don't get a chance to interact with people so much, it becomes a very lonely sort of thing. And I'm guessing, I, I, I'm not an expert in the field like you are, but I'm guessing that can tend to feed on itself as well. So there's probably this multiple pronged benefit to having comfort keepers folks in these homes with people helping them out. I mean, I'm just guessing that's part of it also. No, you hit the nail right on the head, Ed. And, and, and the thing is, is, I mean, it's listed on our brochure, but it's the most undervalued bullet point on that brochure is companionship, mm -hmm. uh, especially during these times of COVID where isolation, depression uh, is, is so prevalent with our seniors right now. Uh, but you're absolutely right. I, you know, there's not old sayings, too, as far as our caregivers are concerned, or excuse me, our concierge, um, you know, is, is, it's like having multiple sets of grandparents. And there's that old saying that the best classroom in the world is at the side of a senior. Yeah, and and yeah, just the, yeah, their absolutely. stories and their experiences. And, and, you know, it's lost on us what they did. Mm -hmm. So we have the life that we're living today back in, you know, the world wars and such. So, I mean, I don't want to get sappy or anything, but it's, it's, really, it's really disappointing to see how that's almost becoming a forgotten issue and to sit and talk to a World War II pilot yes. or, mm -hmm. or, or a World War II nurse or a Korean War nurse or, or any of the above where, where the experiences are so rich and they just they want to share. They have, this, they have this innate, you know, wanting to... to, to you know, talk to people and educate people and share their experiences. And, and, and it's something I think is very much overlooked at this day and age. Now, yeah, and, and Jason, yeah. one last thing. Now, yeah, please. You're exactly right. I, I saw my mom last night. We had dinner together, spent a couple hours talking. And as we were talking, I could see just all the, like you just said, <clears throat> stories that I may or may not have heard when I was younger, but selfishly as human beings, we accidentally get wrapped up in our own lives and tend to out of sight, out of mind if somebody's not right there in front of you. And we had the greatest time with her. And I just kept quizzing her about all these stories about her youth and jobs she had and things like that. And I had sort of heard those stories over the years before, but I really had the time to just sit there and focus with it. And we had a great time. And, and you're exactly right. When I left there, I thought, you know what, this is my reminder to and my mom is doing great. She's completely fine. She's able to get around, do all her own things and all that. But it was a reminder to me that there's that gap that I'm not doing because I get so wrapped up in my own personal selfish life 
and it's hard because it's human nature to have to remind myself to to not be so you know one dimensional. No, I didn't. right. And one, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Miles, please, please. Well, I, I was just going to say, and, and, and in that vein, it, it's what I try to, uh, especially for our listeners today, and if anyone you know even talk to about this, is, is we, we have what we call the talk. And, and what I mentioned er, earlier, being proactive versus reactive, is, is everybody <clears throat> should have that conversation with their aging loved ones of what that journey looks like to them. Uh, as they age in place, what are their choices? I mean, some seniors will choose to move to an assisted living facility, which is sometimes referred to as a cruise ship on land. Uh, <laughs> some will choose to want to stay in their home until the very last day. But we should have that talk with our, our parents and our aging loved ones of what that journey looks like so that you're not, you're not reacting from the hip every time something happens. Right. Uh, and, and you start introducing the idea because you know, one thing is, is guaranteed in this life, and we're all going to get old. We're all going to need assistance at some point in time. Um, so rather than waiting until you're overwhelmed with last-minute decisions, is sit and have that talk of what that journey looks like. Make sure that you have all your legal documents in place, because a lot of times folks forget the fact that HIPAA, which are privacy laws and such, if you don't have the proper legal documents in place and mom, God forbid, goes into the hospital with a stroke and is unable to speak for herself, you as a child cannot just go in there and say, you know, I'm in charge here without an advanced health care directive that names you the agent to be able to speak legally on behalf of your loved one. And as a side note, I would let people know as soon as you have children that are turning the age of 18, do the same thing because yes. they become a legal adult. You can't strut in there as mom or dad and say, I want to talk to you about my kid because they're now an illegal adult. So have an advanced health care for everybody who is a legal adult and may not be able to speak for themselves at some point in time. So when you're having that talk with your parents or your aging loved one, make sure that there's an advanced health care directive in place that names an agent that's able to speak on their behalf should they not be able to. Otherwise, you're going to leave those decisions in the hands of the courts and the doctors in the hospital. And that there's no more helpless feeling than to be shut out of the medical decisions for your loved ones. Now, Miles, I mean, that, that is so powerful, and but so accurate. You know, often we get, I, I feel that we get lost in the minutia of, you know, what's going to happen to mom and dad's house? What will happen to their car or, or their finances or when they're gone? But that's, I mean, that's that's just one of the conversations. And, and in a lot of ways, that can be the easy one. It's, it's when you have right. the conversation of, you know, how do they want to be buried? Where do they want to be? Where do they want to spend their last days? How do they want to be taken care of? And like you said, my mom was very big at the end. She was not going to be in a hospital when she passed. And that was the one thing that she was always adamant on. She was, I wanted to be home. I want to be where I felt at, at my best and my happiest. I do not want to be anywhere else but there. And that was a big deal. And, that, you know, for us, when you have that conversation, when the time's upon you, it's so emotional. And it can be so difficult that it's hard to be clear-headed at the time when you really need to be most. And, and I think that, you know, the idea of have that conversation, I mean, that's, that's just a broader topic in general and in, in, re, in reality that we are to live in the world today. You need to have those tough conversations of, of good times so when the bad times come or the hard times come, you're ready and you're not just making emotional responses and reactions. Right. And something you mentioned is very important, uh, a little something called patience rights. Uh, is is we have the resources so that our seniors don't have to pass in the hospital. So if they want to go home, they can go home. The hospital can't demand that they stay in the hospital. We have we have hospice, which is end of care yes. uh, care. That uh, you know, there's a lot of great hospice companies out there, uh, which is a whole different conversation as far as the myths and, and misinformation on hospice because folks are misinformed about hospice. And uh, if we have time, we can get into that. But what, if we bring a senior home, we can have hospice care. We can can have home health care. We can have home care. We can get a hospital bed into the into the home. There I mean, there are no limits of the resources that we can grant those wishes. And again, if you've had that conversation before it becomes an issue, you've got that roadmap. You know, I, I refer another to an old cliche of people don't plan to fail, they just fail to plan. So if, if you have that roadmap already created and you have those decisions already made, that prevents the kids from standing outside in the hall arguing yes. about what mom or dad would yes. have wanted. 
your mom would have wanted this or dad would have you don't have to have that conversation it takes the pressure off the adult kids it takes the guilt away from the adult kids because now you're just following mom and dad's plan you're following their directive that's it you've had this conversation before it was an issue no, nope, 100% Miles. Miles, we got to take a quick break, but stick with us. We want to keep you in on the backside as we close out the show today. You're listening to V in Action on 98.1 FM and AM 1220 KHTS. Be right back. Omelets or pancakes? You used to have to flip a coin, but not anymore. Because for a limited time, all 10 of our hearty omelets now come with unlimited pancakes. Which means this coin doesn't have to choose anymore. What? I don't have to choose anymore? Ha! Ah! Later, choosers. I'm free. <laughs> choose not to choose. Over 10 omelets now come with unlimited pancakes. Oh. At IHOP. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. Hometown, your hometown station. Oh, that was fast, Shane. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to VN Action on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. Jason Gibbs here along with Ed Masterson. Sorry, Ed, you don't get any cool little quips this time. We're bringing Miles McNamara from Comfort Keepers right back on and continuing our conversation. Uh, Miles, kind of the two things I was hoping you could hit on. Uh, one, if you, you mentioned talking about uh, hospice care, uh, so maybe go a little bit about hospice care. But I was also curious, you mentioned right now the the generation that is a lot of the, the people and seniors that you're dealing with, you know, with the, the greatest generation, World War II and Korean War veterans. How do you see comfort cares and home care changing with that next generation, with with the you know the, the kids from you know, the the 60s and the 70s who are now coming into the age of where they're going to start needing home care, do you see a difference in the generation, from the generation to generation, on the type of care that they are going to want or need? <laughs> Only about 180 degrees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that was easy. Uh, you, yeah, I mean, again, when you when you segue from our our great generation to our baby boomers. Oh, you can, you know. um, <laughs> well, and again, our, our, our seniors, I mean, there was a dynamic, our, our greatest generation, they listen to their doctors that, you know, our baby boomers don't trust our doctors. Uh, there's, there's this little thing called Google, so everybody thinks they're a doctor. Uh, WebMD, WebMD makes everybody, uh, you know, a PhD, <laughs> uh, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's the thing, but again, it, even with that generation, we, it, we still stress you know, being prepared, having the talk. I mean, all those things, the fundamentals we talked about earlier still apply. Uh, but the biggest, the biggest uh, challenge is when it's reactive and there's, there's a stroke or a broken hip or something. And, and, and the biggest challenge we have, guys, and I'll, I'll, I'll say straight up, is, is home care is not paid for by insurance. So it's very costly, and it's one of the biggest pet peeves, not pet peeves, but it's my Achilles heel because, you know, there's so many people out there that need home care that can't necessarily afford it. Uh, and, and I think someday insurance will cover it. Right now, uh, <clears throat> Medicare has given the green light to what they call Medicare Advantage plans, Kaisers, United Healthcare, those types that are, are sticking their toe in the water of paying for home care because they're seeing the, the value of its proactive preventative measures. Um, and at some point in time, I think hopefully it'll be a fully covered benefit by Medicare because there are so many seniors out there who need the help that can't afford it, and it breaks my heart. So that'll be the biggest paradigm shift, I think, when, when insurance starts covering home care. Um, so, yeah, but, but to answer your original question, huge dynamic difference between our greatest generation, our baby boomers, and God help us when we get to the millennials. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're already smarter than all the other generations, so they may not even need us at that point. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, That's I think right, I might be considered quick, a millennial. Real, real, real quick, though, because I Please. know we're running out of time, Please. I do want to touch base on hospice care. Hospice care, there's a myth that if you put mom or dad on hospice, it's a death sentence. And, and that's, that's not true. People have actually come off of hospice if, if they have you know, rallied and gotten better. Uh, 
Hospice is just a more hands-on oversight of, of care in the home. Uh, and, and the hospice nurses just come in, they manage the medications, they, you know, I, you know, and then depending on the diagnosis or the illness of, of the patient, uh, hospice care can be a godsend to not only the, the patient, but to the family as far as keeping them comfortable, helping them in the home, and actually ha- hold, you know, be with them right up until that final time. So, you know, I would encourage people to do their research on hospice. Uh, I have a lot of resources where I can have someone just speak to them if they think it's the right fit. Uh, you know, so don't, don't be scared by hospice. Uh, it can be, you know, a blessing as you, as you take those final steps. Awesome. Miles, thank you so much, man, for being with us today. We appreciate everything you do for VIA and you do for our seniors. Ed, thanks for joining us again today. Of it's course. been a wonderful time for the last month. I look forward to get back together again. Sounds good. Miles, thank you very much, man. We love you. Thank you for coming on. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Stay tuned for the Senior Hour coming up next on your hometown station.